Hello, everyone. Welcome to a new episode of Straightforward. We're super excited today to be with Yang Gao, uh, a senior leader that built a career around machine learning, all things uh, data analytics and product management. So we're here to talk about you know, how to scale a new capability like Gen AI and AI in the big enterprise. Uh, so with that, uh, Yang, can you tell a little bit, a little bit about you know yourself, your background, and what actually, uh, what's what's your initial interest in this field? What kind of a, what made you kind of a lean towards this uh, this area? First of all, thanks uh, Bruno and CIT right to uh, invite me for the opportunity for a speak. Um, I would say, why did I actually choose this field? Um, look, before we even talk about like AI, right? Like for me, I think. Um, I do have a belief. I think um, there's a lot of buzzword of AI, but honestly, for me, I feel AI actually stands for augmented intelligence. You probably have heard about this definition before. I do believe the human and AI working together will help or it's actually serve a purpose to actually augment human intelligence with whether it's your personal life, um, day-to-day life, uh, doing you know chores or anywhere to like enterprise to fighting sustainability challenges um, or actually helping people just, you know, live the better, like an easier life. So I think a start there um, is where I believe I have that strong kind of like, I would say motivation um, as in why we even practice AI um, right in the first place. Uh, secondly, I think comes probably a little bit of my background. Um, or rather than just pure technical, like statistics, like engineering background, I do have also a strong, um, I would say, passion about um, not not just the typical user centricity, but really understand why human behave certain ways. Um, like how can we, and again, right, in the purpose of serving, help us augment our intelligence how do we actually incorporate the technology best to serve our life and our um, right like jobs uh, to in the bottom line is to help us do things better and best of course if we can do it easier and cheaper that's better um, uh, right so I think with that in mind uh, it's really like what is the purpose and then what are some I would say uh, uh, like uh, passion and uh, interest to drive me to the field? Um, I've been to like I would say uh, the product management like field for quite some long time for two consumer facing like you know uh, enterprise facing um, startup enterprise. Um, but the bottom line is that, that purpose doesn't change. I think whatever we do is really in some way to help either augment our own associates intelligence or help our consumer um, or our user uh, do whatever the job they want to do right in a better way. Um, so I don't know if that kind of like paved kind of the interest or starting point why you want to do this in the first place. Yeah, it is. It is perfect. Thank you. Thank you for that background. So so uh, most of our, our audience here, our listeners are coming from the enterprise side, right? So in, a, in, a, in introducing a new Technology, right? For more promising that it is, in case we're talking about, you know, augmented intelligence is super, super exciting, right? So, but still, it's an introduction, it's an introduction of change, right? So, uh, from your experience, uh, you know, in, in mainly on the enterprise world, uh, what are the things that actually kind of are the big, you know, obstacles or the big challenges to to roll out, you know, to scale, uh, to to get to to achieve that vision? You know, of uh, deploying a new technology that actually can help people, because uh, to really, to really kind of uh, achieve that vision, we, people have to start working differently, right? They have to relate their relationship with technology has to change. So it's it's a, a lot of things I, I imagine that have to happen, right? So in, in in your experience, like what are the kind of the the biggest challenges to actually uh, execute uh, against that vision? Yeah. Yeah, great question, Bruno. And again, I can't speak on behalf of all the industry. I know I want to recognize, actually be very empathetic. I know some industries, especially very in New York, like a financial industry, right? Like different industries, they do have different challenges in terms of there are some external challenges, right? Recognize regulatory, that's like, as a, uh, I think, overall evolution field for AI privacy and then all of those like a security, whatever complexity uh, involved. But I will say if I take away some of the, the external regulatory challenge, right? Like that inherent for a certain vertical. If I just look at the enterprise, it depends on like how big enterprise um, that you're calling about. Um, generally, 
pretty big organization that has like thousands of tens of thousands of employees, right? Inevitably, it's less of the tech. It's more like that people process because it's not just about, I think, a lot of time the technology is probably the easy piece because you still have human um, unless we're just talking about even automation, right? That is still in impact or change some sort of process that, that the current enterprise is doing or or has been doing forever. Um, so the people process, I think probably is a very common framework, right? People process technology um, is has like same story when you apply AI. So um, like what actually focus on the uh, business focus, right? Priority. I mean, AI is an enabler. It's a means to the end, right? It's it, it's not it's not like the only thing. And all of the, a lot of times, like you don't have to have like a super fancy like LOM. Actually, it's wrong for apply that try to force fit a technology to a problem, right? I think it doesn't change if the business wants to. Uh, it's very clear what they um their goal business objective is, right? What are the priority or the actually challenge they are facing? Um, go from that top down first, right? And then that help you to prioritize and focus on what problem you're trying to solve. And then that actually inevitably will start a good foundation of AI, right? Like you at least pick the right lane. And next level is, okay, you know what you should, what you really want to address and solve. It's more of Okay, is it feasible to do so, right? And how much effort you can do so. And then that could be uh, really like depends on your industry, vertical, right? Like is that regulatory a lot of challenge or is that just like a surely amount of uh, like efforts um, or is it technically feasible at that point, right? So from that product management set, you know what the line you should operate and then it becomes another layer of, okay, how you want to do it. Um, I do have the right time and resources. Um, and then the timing that you need to address a business problem, does that make sense in terms of you have the proper team, right? The people and the, the right process. Once even you have a solution, right? How do you actually do that change management? How do you deploy a solution? Um, I will say on high level that people process tech, right? That's always kind of... Um, almost like a framework, how you think about like potential challenges you might run into. Um, maybe two more, I would say, touch points I will bring as part of that, um, I would say, prioritization even or problem that you want to focus, right? Um, goes back to that challenge on um, some of the vertical that a different industry is facing. It's as a big enterprise, you always do that thinking of balance risk and rewards, right? I, I really love this thinking, like, right? yes, you probably have a lot of regular challenge. Does that mean you have to go that first? Probably don't, right? You think about AI, you can do internally operation efficiency in game versus externally. Okay, I really want to use that for like demand, right? Revenue generation or consumer experience or whatever for a, a revenue kind of a, a purpose. So you balance the risk and reward, right? Like that should help you to, um, I was make that proper trade off and which ones you can actually scale first versus something may come later when it's more mature or like, or you do you do enough experimentation, you know you are more confident to do that. Um, and then the second point I would say is um, other than, in addition to balance the risk and reward, right? It's really, I think uh, a lot of times scaling um, come from experience, it's like, it's also trying to have a proper definition of what success even look like. Because we talk about scale, right? What does a scale mean? I think if you ask different, if you ask a user or the business function versus like uh, um, maybe a, a DevOps team, right? They probably have even different different definition. I think I'd ask again if you trade as a scaling approach in the in the uh, bottom line, it's already you need to think as a product platform. So not the one time you, I, I know I keep hearing use case, use case, use case. It's a very common thing. But if you already think you, in order to scale, right, you have to consider a product, who is going to be the persona, what level you're trying to achieve the business impact with, right? They inevitably will help you, guide you on the proper path for scaling, at least to think about that way, right? And then what does it mean to scale? And then I, I think as a, wherever, whatever team or what executive level you are, right? Make a proper alignment on what that scaling means. Is that number of user? Is that active business impact? Or um, is it really just like the coverage of the business, right? You have to like everything from internal, external or whatever. So I think uh, having that 
alignment or clarity are really going to help the team as well. So rather than, okay, um, MVP, that, that means scale, or maybe it's also means something different from, um, yeah, it depends on the stakeholder, right? So. Yeah, I, I, I love the, I love those three, three main points there, right? It's kind of a, to, if I understand it right, like a summarize, like really to tackle the, the, the three out there, the, the people process technology at the same time, right? Try to support those three pillars. Uh, the definition of uh, of success and scale, which is you know in our experience, that's a it's not the, that's a very critical one, like to define you know the criteria of success. And usually, it's if it in our experience, if it's not linked very clearly to business impact, that then it's then you're usually not successful. Like if it if if your goals look more like you know we we have to do this to just do it, and we're doing it for the sake of doing it, or we're we're successfully implementing this new technology just because we could do it. Yeah, that's a out out that's a output mindset, right? Yes. We just yes. we did this rather than okay. Uh, for example, we really have a, a, a volume penetration problem. That is actual business problem, right? How is this going to help? That um, can you tie going back to a typical framework? Like, what is the OKR for this one that you have to achieve, right? And you can actually measure it, even like your. <laughs> whatever technology, AI, LOM, or like a machine learning, or sometimes just automation, right? So it does not have to have force fit that. Um, I, I think because I, uh, and again, I even want to pass the question back. Why do you think that this is such a big challenge of scaling? Like, uh, is, is it just because this has been ever, it's just now it's AI, but it used to be scaling probably digital technology, right? Exactly. But why do people think it is a challenge? To scale, uh, how is this different than anything else? Like rather than scaling AI, how is it different than scaling any other tools? Um, right? It's I, I think it's the same mentality framework um, mm -hmm. that we can ask ourselves. Like whatever team you are, like this will be no different. Um, probably people I I would say they come in as a you know, this kind of wave of technology evolution, and then they feel like a FOMO, if I don't do anything, I miss out. I think uh, we have to recognize, yes, yeah, some of our leadership, right? Even, um, I was even touched on the people side, right? It's not just, uh, um, okay, after you're done, you're done, right? And then, um, like, even part of that design work, right? You include the user, that's not enough. I think just like any kind of uh, uh, new technology um, or like any change management, right? You have to involve the people and give them proper like information, right? Again, this is augmentary intelligence, not forced fit, right? Like completely, okay, drop your previous thinking now down and move on to something else. I think that, that part of the uh, co co learning piece, right? Um, uh, not disclosing too much, but I think one of my current experience uh, we have found it's extremely um, uh, helpful. It's like actually a very simple formula. It just bring people along and teach them along the way. It doesn't have to be that tool that you're trying to implement. It's a broader concept. It's really spark people's curiosity. You'll be surprised how much actually that can actually have a, a ripple effect, right? So we actually not Again, not recognizing all the company have the time and budget and dedication for, but as part of the big enterprise, especially people is such a big picture of uh, any scaling impact. Um, we actually build a learning innovation app, not just a lab, not just the AI, right? Like churning, doing something sequentially. No, that was not the intent. A huge part of the OKR is actually learning and training. So it's actually show people something very simple concept, but treat it as like AI 101. Anywhere, like we teach our executive to like the typical, right? Like associates. Um, but the point, the the goal is again, it's augment humans' intelligence together, and then you bring them along. Uh, training, of course, not like just the typical. Uh, I would say like a, what you saw, like sit down, the hands on, right? So it's a demo, very engaging, very immersive, like learning what AI from your typical even personal life could be like. Anywhere from immersive experience, right? Like so smartware to like a, how does that actually translate into uh, our work? What kind of AI initiative we are doing? And then of course, nothing speaks louder than demo. Just just try it out, right? And then spark people interest. And then that is a huge, I, we have got a lot of fantastic feedback and then even recognition. So it's, we did most of our internal, but we did invite a lot of cross industry leaders um, 
like Microsoft, like Meta, right? So come over, kind of like share some of the engaging experience with our associates. Um, and then, of course, we have of internal kind of booths, right, to feature like what are the current AI um, kind of initiative will cross out. Not everything has to be Gen AI, right? Like. I, I think uh, as a big enterprise, you probably will be too late if you have not done some sort of AI in the past. It's more of bring people together, like, uh, uh, right, like boil down to like a simple, like interesting learning sessions and then gradually kind of step up, um, right. And then you can probably even find some, um, uh, like groups. They are going to be specially like, uh, um, have a, a particular fit and scaling. We can scope out some of our, I would say like, uh, from business objective, right? There are going to be some field, of course, uh, that going to be on everyone's radar. But there could be something like, for example, we are in physical goods production, right? Supply chain is going to be huge. I know you guys also work in supply chain in terms of uh, uh, digital transformation, right? But like we may miss something, but like uh, through learning like uh, this type of engagement, right? That people element, um, that can be another thing of scaling of uncover potential area that could be also very, very critical, but this way is led also led, right? You, you almost have crowdsource what could be the potential opportunity. And then of course, as a central team, we can help prioritize and evaluate the how, right? Um, so yeah, just want to touch base on that part of uh, bring people along the journey and then the, the learning experience um, is really, uh, uh, I, I found that it's very beneficial enabler for the scaling of AI as well. And then, of course, once you have more people's stakeholder and engagements, uh, uh, I would say interest, right? It becomes inevitably easier when you actually start rolling out a particular product or tool. We got so much ask because people are interested. Um, yeah, so usually when when you start having some success right that that's when you kind of a yeah, kind of yeah. In, in interest yeah, right? yeah yeah and people actually are gonna come to us like oh they saw this one demo they they're like we wonder can we actually apply for this too so right so of course we're gonna be but still right human are i mean unless we have all data connected all use cases so like in the enterprise everyone's workflow completely digitalized I will think we're still relying on some what human inputs, right? Understanding what uh, opportunities and then how that impact is, right? So even become this, uh, I was like the a funnel of potential impact. We open it up because now we have a broader, um, um, like almost like a user base or a stakeholder base um, to help us even uncover the potential impact that we can, that we might have missed um, in the first round or something, right? So it becomes this continuous um, right discovery phase so yeah, can we double down that kind of because i think i think i think i i, I sense you kind of uh, had some experience trying to solve a problem that it's very uh common that we see in 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 our uh in our clients and prospective clients which is uh usually because big organizations they have you know pockets of the organization of different type of knowledge right so and that those uh, transformation based on technology like AI, like Gen AI, they usually start on a technical pocket, right? But with engineers, so the engineers know what can be done, but they don't know exactly what business problem can be solved with that new capability, right? So, and, and the people that know what the business needs don't know what that technology can do for them right so yeah yeah there's, yeah. there's, there's a gap there. between what and uh, versus and why versus how right so exactly so the different teams. So, so uh so like how, how have you uh in your experience how have you solved that you know that kind of chicken and egg thing because you, the knowledge are in different ways and only the combination of those two knowledge actually can get you to a place yeah. where you go, yeah. now i understand what the potential of this you know, technology is for the business right so how we yeah, yeah. to solve that in, in your that, that is a very uh, thanks for the question that I, that I guess that's basically what the product branch is supposed to do right it's really the design thinking framing process um we're not expecting just so to be clear right like we're not expecting all the business users or the stakeholder they kind of frame the problem perfectly for you right for the team that actually create the solution so it's more on i will say generally um I, I think a different enterprise probably have a different title or experience right but it is very critical uh, to go back to even this practice of product management right like the huge part it's 
prioritization comes probably afterwards. That's already in the face of you're trying to figure out how. But in the beginning, do you even frame the problem problem like a, a properly or translate properly so they bridge the gap between typical uh, business like a domain versus actually the uh, requirements that the technical team can actually work on and then think they can actually boil this down to something tangible or evaluate different technology can fit, right? So again, that is really a critical um, element and then skill um, I, I think we can actually train people for. So coming from um, earlier, I mentioned like I my blended background, right, with uh, design thinking, I think that is a huge enabler. I strongly recommend um, if I don't think anyone has to go to honestly a design school, especially just for that. There are various like course or even like the YouTube. I think uh, ideal like those design agency, right? They 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 uh, have a lot of those content, right? You can actually, of course, best is to have your team to train for that. Um, they, they, it is a specialty. Um, I would say skill that takes time and learning to train and get very good at it, right? So it's really like not just a uh, um through interview. It's almost like a training to understand like for example if you ask even the users to describe their current process right or maybe have a process flow but you can actually reframe the problem like people may be okay um uh i wanna like for example like uh, uh understanding how i should make investment for like different spends or something like that right like think about like how normally they will uh, uh in like like a plain English, the query that they might actually have, but how do you even translate that back to, okay, is this type of a modeling, right? Or is it more like a process automation or something like that? They are, you, we do need some um, folks, I would say I've seen both sides, but generally perhaps it may be easier to train some sort of people with technical background um, that they have done, they know somewhat and train them with a design thinking skill. I actually share this with a lot of folks, um, especially lead like a data science or AI team, um, like what kind of like uh, team profile or scaling, right? They need to upscale. So really this does not take a lot of efforts, but you do need to have um, some sort of training in place to allow technical folks to first bring that curiosity, uh, like empathy, and then be able to have some tangible like artifacts or toolkits. They can actually do this type of framing and problem almost like a, a, a scoping type of exercise. So then they can translate properly. Okay, originally maybe the users speak on this, but um, on the actual uh, 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 technical translation, right? You translate that to almost like an ML problem of, oh, this is actually optimization. You are trying to actually achieve this because the business wants to achieve certain ultimate, like a optimal, like a, a outcome, right? So yes, it's not that easy, but it is doable. Um, I think one thing maybe um, my current uh, uh, employer had a strong DNA of this is we really, really value design thinking and user centricity. And it's not just a, a, a buzz. We literally have team dedicated and training or train their trainer, right? Uh, uh, like train the trainee and then become, and then you can amplify that effect. So people can actually get um, adjusted to, and then I strongly recommend, and actually it's a demand for my team is for have the technical folks, if they can't be um, like have that entire user discovery uh, session so, or, or uh, along the way, because generally will be iterative, right? At least that attend a few sessions for that, what we call the design thinking sessions. So they can be really hear what the users say. That help them to think, rethink, or retranslate uh, what would be potentially a technical problem, but how uh, like uh, uh, in, in users original like wording, right? And that actually takes uh, uh, practice training and to get actually very comfortable and a very uh, like I would say uh, uh, skilled for such uh, kind of like thing. But yes, it's a very critical skill and um, uh, I would say like, of before you build any solutions. <laughs> um, yeah. Talk, talk about the the problem and, and the and what are trying to achieve before you kind of came up. Come yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah, we a... have done so many of uh, those experiences in the past. It was like, it was, it does not require a very sophisticated ML problem. Actually, if you know the business process, right, it's, a lot of those can be tangible into almost like a, a flow, like a workflow, and then you understand what 
step can be potentially influenced by either automation or it could be influenced by some sort of ML or like a modeling or sometimes, you know what, it's not suitable for either. You have to have the really human in the loop to understand why certain decision that actually is more complex than just turning a simple ML model behind, um, especially a lot of business problem. It is like that. You need to understand why an influence outcome. That's a different approach. Um, requirements when you come from how you address that from AI. Um, I don't want to touch too much on that, uh, like technical side, but it is a whole nother like AI that none of the Gen AI right now can do because just be, I, I actually call, put that as a, as a cautionary tale, right? Like people are expecting, yes, they can do a lot, but it's more of starting from like a zero would do uh, as a for like some sort of template, right? To help you uh, uh, um, almost like a, um, accelerate your productivity a little bit, but really, really cannot count on LM for any reasoning work. No, you cannot do that. <laughs> and it's very dangerous to do that. Um, yeah. So. Got it. And, uh, and, and so, so just so I understand, like, so when you do those designs, the design things, um, sessions, so you bring not, not only kind of create a discipline to people talk about what, what they try to achieve in, in the problem set of uh, jumping to solutions. You also bring in specialized knowledge. So you, you you bring in people that understand AI, that understand you know other aspects of technology, that they can then help with kind of a creating that vision together with uh, with the business people. That's 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 the, the strategy. Yeah, I, I would say um, that is not. I recommend that. Um, I do not know if all the team have the interest uh, or like especially the technical team, but it, I, my personal recommendation is strongly. Uh, it's less of a how, it's more of they need to hear what exactly the problem is first and try not to overturn that into something else, right? Yes, PM will translate that, but that is a huge difference to what I observed, like that empathy level. And it's not just the, the buzzword empathy. It's they really understand what the user intent is, right? So because that can get lost easily, like translated, like, uh, uh, like translated out, like we'll probably play the words like, I don't know, dictionary or something, right? People's minds, when they think about something, they might not be the same after two or three people uh, uh, like passing on the information. So it's always very helpful, at least for that big initial session to be, effect to be, I would say, more efficiently um, understand what the problem space is. And it's a very valuable, I would say, almost like an experience, immersive experience for the solution team to hear that on a first hand. Um, I think especially, um, I, I would say, I can't say so much for certain uh, profile for the development team. I think especially um, AI asking, like if they're data science background, right? Uh, if they're like front end, um, I think more like a user facing. Yeah, those, they actually made a mandate. They have to be there. <laughs> um, but other ones, I would say back end data engineering, that probably is not so much needed. Um, but of, of, of course, I think, if there's opportunity, it doesn't hurt. The initial discovery session, the folks can be there. It's always to bring that, I would say, empathy and then uh, the user, like, a really understanding. And that will be a much more vivid session than it doesn't matter how much slides, whatever you talk later. So hear firsthand from the users or consumers, right? That will be a really value add. Um, um, yeah. Got it. And understand that. The responsibility to actually run that process and run the design thinking process is in the hands of the product manager, that the product person. That's that's the that's their remedy. Yeah. Part. So so I I think that that um, may be carried out a different flavor of a different enterprise, right? Um, of course, if you have that resource or dedication or dedicated team to do that. Um, I think uh, my current um, employer, we have um, certain team dedicated for that. So PMs, of course, that's there, right? Because they need to take the outcome, translate it properly to whatever requirements framing. Um, they need to set it up. Um, but you do sometimes if let's say if it's a large cohort, you have like 10 or 20 people stakeholder and ranging from different level, you might need a co-facilitator to do that, right? So that's another reason you might want to invite your team for that purpose. If you don't have a dedicated separate resource uh, um, or like, a, a, I would say user research team, right? If a big tech like digital team, normally they have user research team, right? Dedicated for this purpose, but 
not everyone has a bandwidth or like keep uh, uh, right like a uh, uh, leverage to do so. So that's why if you train your team, they can be your co-pilot, right? In this case, and co-facilitate um, because that that really the point for this one is to not influence. I think those sessions to run very well to get the best out of it is not interject too much, right? Of your um, like no solution mode, really just be extremely, extremely um, like uh, neutral and then uh, neutral and then uh, um, like empathetic about it, right? Just hear people out. That is like later on, you can even have Gen AI. This is actually a great use case. Like you can use LLM to do clustering, right? To do like a, a feedback, like analysis synthesis and group them, right? Um, but in the session itself, it is really like try not to interfere or like have any sort of pre-projected as long as you have a goal that's that's fine to take that to a certain goal that you're trying to achieve right to try to understand the problem then really get the bottom of it so that's why i'm saying it does take skills and then a uh, 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 training and practice to do this do it very well um but it is feasible and manageable for people to invest and uh, um get good at it yeah so well, Yang, so thank you so much for for you know for uh, sharing your wisdom and experience with us. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, any kind of a new projects, anything uh, you know, anything in in the future that excites you, just kind of going for like, but what what in this field kind of a you're really excited to see? Yeah, yeah, I think um, I probably alluded a little bit earlier. So in terms of the uh, AI field, right, the next level is um, again going back to the purpose is augment intelligence right i think right now yes everyone or not maybe not everyone there is a strong crazy hype about around OM. but if you actually know the foundations that is that those uh, ai model is created to as a pure almost like a predictive like language they know what is good to say so they know the correct way of saying that does not mean they know to, how to say correct things. So that's a two different thing, right? Like uh, uh, correct way saying it is different than like the reasoning or thought. So uh, currently we are strongly practice causal AI. So I encourage folks, I think especially in healthcare, um, it's a mandate and policy making it's a mandate. So it's very dangerous to actually use AI. Um, AI or even ML to or deep learning to just churn it out readouts, right? They are great at prediction, but man, oh man, it's horrible or it does not know actual reasoning, right? That part, I think, can get very easily lost um, just because everyone's chasing the big AI um, LLM and stuff that actually is counter very intuitive what we're trying to do to augment actual intelligence, not just augment LSA workflow. <laughs> so if you really want to do that, let's really take that human and machine approach um, and then folks can search more the causal AI uh, practice um, and discipline. Um, yeah, so that's actually some, a lot of the company are trying to do, even the gen AI piece, they're trying to teach the AI to know a lot of physical reasoning. So it does not come to some sort of absurd, like hallucinate, I do just throw a basketball, like does that like return like out of nowhere, right? It, it violates physical law because it does not understand what is reasons, what should be the right way of outcome. Um, yeah. Yeah, so a long way to go to 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 get the, yeah, the yeah, right yeah. things, the right things in the right way. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Seeing the correct thing again, right? It's different than the thing it correct. <laughs> right now, the AI is very good at that saying things uh, 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 correctly or make you feel like they're saying saying things correctly. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, awesome. thank, thank you so much, Yang. Thank you so much for participation. Yeah. For generosity, sharing your your learnings uh, across your journey. Thank you so much. Awesome. Bye -bye. Thanks, Bruno. Yeah.